Welcome to Module 4. This is Thursday. I'm here with uh, Blake Ray. I'm Jason Will. Let's jump right in. We're almost there. Okay. Yeah, we're making some serious progress. Now, um, we know consistency is key. So, Blake Ray, how are we going to start our day on Thursday? Hot sheet. I think, I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think that's where we should start. Uh, next, we should do a little bit of lead follow-up. Who knows? Somebody could have taken a card out of the door and going, gosh, I gotta, this is, I've never seen a real estate agent who actually hustles like this. I might give him a call. I mean, you've got your Craigslist, your Facebook ads. You've got enough stuff to check. Should be some stuff coming There's gonna in. It's going to be something. Could have gotten a call back from your circle prospecting. Yep. Somebody going, man, I got a coworker at work that's been waiting on a house to come on the market here. I'm going to take them through the open house. Um, so there, there should be some definite signs of momentum here. I think... Uh, it, it, this could be another opportunity to create another uh, Craigslist post. Uh, this time you could actually uh, create a, a Craigslist post that actually showcases the, the, the subdivision or gets a little more specific on this um, kind of number one amenity of the house that you want to, to showcase, whether you're focusing on the kitchen, the backyard, the acreage. Um, but they would be up to the agent to decide if this is really a worthwhile avenue for them. So always be testing uh, the viability of Craigslist. But again, I'm a big fan of Craigslist. I've really, uh, it really helped me build my business. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like you said, we're dealing much more with a Facebook first audience here in the real estate industry. So, uh, and this is gonna be kind of a passive activity where we just, we create a, a Facebook infographic with some nice visual, visual, uh, visual images of the home and the date and time, the details of the open house, the address. So they could use Canva to do that, to create the graphic. So it doesn't have to be expert level graphic, but we just need something right. that we can share to buy, sell trade groups on our Facebook page, on our business page, on Instagram. Once again, you got to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, really, if you even, like I'm just trying to look at every avenue and say, well, I'm not that guy. I can't do Canva. But realistically, if I went to a mortgage lender and said, hey, you know, I'm interested in your product. Do you provide realtors with any tools? There's a healthy amount. Any of them, uh, you know, Movement Mortgage provides websites, for crying mm -hmm. out loud. Like, there's, they'll give you tools in order, they hope you return the business. Mm, that's a good they'll point. make your, can't. they'll meet make your flyers for you. I've so had them show leverage. up. Yeah. Leverage your vendors. Free leverage too. Free like leverage. Not even paid leverage. Free. Yeah. That's Just a good plan. Because they want your business. Exactly. So um, that is definitely something that I would highly recommend. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it, it, it is a co-marketing situation. So they want to do it. They're dying to do it. I haven't even asked and I've showed up at open houses and I've had flyers sitting there from a lender I've never met. Yeah. That's a good call. Never met them. Um, what about uh, buy, sell, trade groups? Are, are those important? Um, have you got any experience using those or generating leads I, from I, them? Well, I do use them a lot. I think you have to micro commitments. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, you got to calm down. Not everybody's going to be the next, you know, big internet agent. But one thing that you need to consider about these buy, sell, and trade groups is like what's the average user right like what are, my mom's my mom lives in Iowa and she's on South Baldwin's buy sell and trade like that should just show you the scope of what you're dealing with like thousands right and thousands of people so join as many of them as you can many abide of them abide by the rules yep because you're right we've had people call us from Texas and say oh we're coming in we saw your thing on such and such buy sell right. and trade so it's one of those things that, again, it's free. If you abide by the rules, you're not going to get kicked out. And the, the graphic just has to be um, nice looking, just a little visual. Serviceable. Yeah. All right. All right. So then we're going to get um, back out of the office and we're going back to video. Do you think video is important? I think we've, we've shot a number of videos already. It sounds like it might be important. I'm not sure. Well, it's also back to the original point, which is, wow, it looks like Blake's doing a lot. They don't look at the house and go, well, he's clearly done four posts about the same house. He hasn't sold that house. They go, whoa, you're everywhere. So look at it like that. 
don't look at it like, well, if I do four, I'm guaranteeing five people for every video I do. Right. Well, and, and I look at that and they go, we are looking at an experience we provide, a service we provide, and service is marketing. Yeah. So look at Blake Ray servicing this for sale by owner or servicing his seller client by doing all of this repetitive, consistent activities that draw attention to the home Absolutely. he's been charged to sell. So it's great. All right, so on Thursday, our big rock item that we want to accomplish is we want to shoot a video that showcases the number one amenity of the house. And we were joking on the Wednesday module about you know, the, the greatest amenity might be, you know, sidewalks. even if you're lucky, it could be sidewalks. Yeah. You know, it might be right. something, um, you know, I don't know. It well, could I mean, be next to an airport. could just be an entrance. Yeah. Like that's your only yeah. selling feature. Like it's got an entrance to it. So you got to go with what you got yeah. and, and just be loud and proud about it, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're not really looking at the houses in these things a lot. They're seeing you. So you got to really realize that, like quit getting behind. Well, this house doesn't have granite, it has Formica. Who gives a crap? Like as long as you're doing four videos on it, you got a better chance of selling it. Well, and we talked about that every potential interaction is an interview. Right. You're constantly having to sell yourself as a real estate agent. That There's no difference in what's taking place in the video. You could mm. be connecting with somebody. You could essentially be interviewing with a potential prospect that you've never met before. Right. And one of the things a that... A neighbor. Yeah. One of the things we hear a lot as a result of doing these videos is people say, well, Jason, I feel like I know you. Yeah. You know, I've never met you in person, but I see your videos and you just have this rapport. So if you go into a listing uh, appointment and you're competing with two other agents, you've already got a big leg up. Exactly. Okay. All right. So shoot, a, shoot and post a quick video uh, on your personal Facebook page. Now, we haven't discussed this before, but it's crucial that the, the an agent lead with their with their personal Facebook page. I think this is a lot of times something that is heavily debated. Yeah. That they should be leading with their business page and sharing to their personal page. But I always go back, where's your audience? Where are the eyeballs? Yeah. They're on your personal page. Keep your personal page balanced with who Blake Ray is as a dad. Yeah. Who um, you know, what's your family life like, what your hobbies are like. I mean, you typically don't have any hobbies. Uh -oh. Uh, but you should probably get some. I'm thinking. Yeah, it would balance out your, your Facebook page a little bit, uh, a little get bit into more. quilting. So this could be if you're really, if you're like, man, this subdivision doesn't even have uh, an entrance, like a sign or really anything. I think you could do a nearby amenity for us living down here on the coast. It could be a boat launch uh, or a neighborhood park or a nearby public park could be something along those lines. There, there will be something, there too. Will be like, something. you're not just going to be stuck in... And even if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, that's a selling feature to Peace somebody. Peace quiet? Yeah. And I want to put, too, we've had agents um, that have literally... I know they've closed seven to eight open houses. I've seen it. And when I sat her down and just asked, she was so happy to, to just vomit all that information up. And she was very simple in what she said. She studied the hot sheet, and she looked for an open house throughout the entire company to see which houses were right about in the average selling point. So if uh, if the average home sell, sales were 175 to 200, she would scour until she found one that was at 160 to 180 because she knew the likelihood somebody would walk in, write up a contract because this home is the numbers don't lie it was right there she knew the market enough and she didn't look know the whole market she knew the market you know that that street mm -hmm. you ask her any question you would think that she had been she could answer you anything but she didn't she only studied the street and they'd be like well what do you think about that house and she's like it's okay a little bit high for the price this one's a good price that's why i'm holding this one open mm -hmm. and that that told people right there she wrote seven offers from open houses. That's crazy. I think she closed all seven too. And then who knows, that's not even tracking the amount of business that came off of that. Just somebody going, 
you really knew your stuff. You impressed me that day. Here's my house. I live in over here. Well, I think this is a great segue into another opportunity that agents should be taking advantage of in their daily schedule. So they finish out Thursday. They don't have any showings or anything specific to do in the afternoon. They could do one of two things. They could seek out an agent who is an expert in this niche they're trying to develop, which is open houses. Mm -hmm. So they could seek out an open house expert or they could do it virtually. They could find a virtual mentor via YouTube and start searching YouTube videos about how to run a successful open house, a mega agent open house, whatever the case may be. Just jump on YouTube and type it in. Anything, I say this a lot in our, in our trainings, that you know, any information that you want to know to earn a million dollars in real estate is on YouTube. I think it's true about anything. Mm -hmm. YouTube, you can be a brain surgeon. YouTube University, right? Right. Okay. All right. Now you're out and about doing this. We're going back to the document strategy, document over create. I think a lot of you know, real estate agents in particular, are, they'll use that excuse. I don't know what to post. I don't know what to, you know, and we're, not, we're saying don't worry about the creation aspect of it. Just document what you're doing. So again, share a picture of that a selfie with you and that top amenity on Facebook, on Instagram, and, and get some more leverage out of that. It, it's hard. I, mean, I, I know I've used that excuse. I mean, you're speaking right to me. I think I used it this week. Well, the other thing that I think is really, really hard is that there's a lack of top of mind awareness around the power of the device itself, of the power right. of the phone. So everything you need to be a digital marketing expert in you know today's modern world is that device you're holding in your hand. Absolutely. So you're paying for it. You're paying for the cell phone bill. Might as well put it to some better use. But it'd be a lot easier just to say, well, I'm saving up for a bunch of Zillow leads. Or, <laughs> you know, it's just easier to say that. Like right. I know that's why, where I was in my first six months, you were telling me what to do. And I was going, yeah, but don't you think I should be like the top agent on Zillow and pay $20 million? Doesn't that make more sense, Jason? If I paid $20,000 a month and had people reach out to me. Yes, yeah, so that's easy. You know, that's yeah, the easy way out. Of course. And then that's, easy street's a myth. But that's why you get a lot of people. And hopefully none of these people will be thinking they'll, they'll gain something off this. A lot of this stuff costs no money. Not a dime. It's sweat equity. It's really back on to you. Do you want it or do you not? Yeah. Are you interested or are you committed? Right. All right. That's it for Thursday.